I'll give it another minute or two. Again, if you're joining us and enjoying your lunch, get yourself comfortable. Get situated. Anybody having anything good for lunch? I had cheese and crackers. I need to go grocery shopping. Maybe you can type what you're having for lunch in the chat. <laughs> I'm having coffee. You're having coffee for lunch? That sounds solid. Uh, let's see. I need to go grocery shopping. My kids eat everything. Right. I see our participant list growing. I don't want to start too soon. Let's see, what time is it? Oh, 12.01. Let's give it another minute and then we'll get started. Again, thank you for joining us. If this is your lunch hour, feel free to get comfortable, have your lunch. I'll just keep talking. This is being recorded. So if you miss something, I will share the recording. Um, I think it'll go out 24 hours after we finish up here today. So you'll see an email sometime tomorrow uh, with the recording. Uh, so you can catch, catch us if you missed anything. Uh, there'll be links in that email as well if you want to do some further investigation. But we're glad for you to join us today. And it's 12.02, so I think we will get started. Um, so this is how to save money on your electric bill. Uh, I'm Christina Crost. I'm the Southern Illinois Outreach Coordinator at Faith in Place. And Katie, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Katie Maxwell. I'm the Communications Coordinator at Faith in Place, and I'm based out of the Chicago office. All right. I'm sitting in Mattoon, Illinois right now, which is about three hours south of you, Katie. Um, so that's where I'm located. And we'll have a chance to share our locations in a minute. Okay. So who is Faith in Place? Well, we empower Illinois people of all faiths to be leaders in caring for the earth. We provide educational resources. We connect with one another and we advocate for healthier communities. Um, and we believe that the environmental movement should be led by people of faith, uh, focusing on justice and care for our common environment because that's what people of faith do. Um, let's see. So here's our locations. Uh, we have an office in Chicago, an office in Lake County, one in the north and west suburbs of Chicago. We have an office in Urbana-Champaign, and then I'm located down here um, in uh, covering Southern Illinois um, from the Mattoon area. So again, I'm Christina Crost. I'm the Southern Illinois Outreach Coordinator. That's my email. So should you have any questions or anything you wanna follow up with, that's how you can connect with me. And that's a picture of me at uh, what we called these, the Green Team Summit in Southern Illinois. We sat down, we did some uh, goal setting and visioning with the green teams located in Southern Illinois. Um, so that's one of the things I do as a green team coach. So if that's something that you find that your green team could use, um, I'm happy to do that. We did it in person. This was uh, in February, long before all the uh, lockdowns and quarantine happened. Uh, but this could be easily translated into something done online. So uh, if that's something your green team is needing, a little bit of a oomph, a little bit of a push, a little bit of an organizing uh, push to see what kinds of things you can get accomplished, I'm, I'm happy to help or direct you to one of the green team coaches who can help. So where are you from? Type in the chat, which you'll find, well, depending on where you have it, your little toolbar. Um, let's see where you're located. I'm gonna open it so I can see. All right, Chicago, Aurora, Wheaton, San Antonio, <laughs> Mount Prospect. Oh, hi Paige, I see that you're in Altamont and Lerna. That's my area. 
All right, so that's so great. We are spread out. I think that's one of the coolest things about Faith in Place is that we, um, we're statewide and we try to have programming that talks to contexts all over the state because issues are very different in very different places. So uh, I think that's one of the strengths of Faith in Place. So thank you for sharing. Okay, slides, here we go. All right, so here's what we're gonna cover today. Um, I kind of wanted to frame this in terms of there are short-term things and long-term things that we can do um, in the energy conversation. Um, we're gonna talk about efficiency. We're going to talk about the demand response programs that our utilities give us. We'll talk about ways to go solar. And then we'll also talk about how we advocate for systemic change. That's part of the long-term change that we're um, seeking here. And then there'll be time for question and answer. I think we'll probably finish up before the hour mark, so we'll have time uh, for question and answer. But should you have questions as we go along, Katie is monitoring the chat. Uh, so you can throw those in the chat box and she can get to them or um, send them along to me and I can work on answering them. If not during the presentation, after the presentation. Okay, so let's do a poll. Let's try to make this a little bit interactive. And Katie's gonna launch this poll real quick. Are you concerned about high electric bills? Is this something you're worried about? Are you not worried about it? Are, is this the first you've thought of that? <laughs> so should you be? Uh, or have you just not given it much thought? See, so far, about half of us are saying yes. Small percentage are saying no. Let's give it a couple more seconds. Give everybody a chance. All right, let's end the poll and I'm going to share the results so you can see. You should be able to see on your screen a little bar graph. Uh, most of us are concerned about our electric bills. Um, about them being high. And I think that that concern uh, kind of came out of the fact that we're home a whole lot more than we used to be. Um, and so that, that gets reflected in our energy bills. All right, I'm going to stop sharing these results and move to the next slide if I can. Here we go. So electric bills are going to get uh, higher, going up during the hot summer months. Uh, I know that uh, I just moved homes, um, and so I know what my bills were at my last house, but this is a new house for me, and so uh, I'm even a little more anxious to get, to get that first energy bill to see what, uh, what those bills are going to look like, and I bet you, know, you might be concerned about that too. But before we jump into the energy saving you know, portion of this, I wanted to frame um, that saving money on our energy bills is great. That means that we have more margin in our budgets to, you know, give maybe more to charities or to save a little bit more for our future. But I wanted to be able to frame for you why energy and environmental justice are connected. And that is because when we burn fossil fuels, this exacerbates health, uh, negative health outcomes and injustice, typically in communities of color and low income communities around our state. And climate change, which is being exacerbated by the burning of our fossil fuels, uh, is impacting disproportionately those who are least able to respond and who have had the you know, least responsible for the, uh, the extraction and the burning of fossil fuels. Illinois has the dubious distinction of having most of our uh, failing fossil fuel plants and dangerous fossil fuel plants located in communities of color, which is an environmental justice issue. And for example, Asthma, which is an offshoot of um, you know, what happens when you have unclean air near a coal-fired power plant. Children of color who live in these communities who have asthma are four times as likely to be hospitalized and are 10 times as likely to die from asthma-related asthma causes. And so that is an injustice. And as people of faith, reducing our energy use can really help our neighbors. And so this is not just let's save money, that's great, that's part of it, but this is also a justice issue. And so if we are people of faith and, and say that we care about our neighbors, 
this is a way we can help care about our neighbors by reducing our fossil fuel usage. So there are ways that we can reduce our bills and ways that we can reduce our footprint. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about these. So these are these short term ways to save that I was talking about. We're gonna increase energy efficiency. There are some energy programs that are offered by our utilities that we can access that can help us save. And then we'll talk about community solar and going solar at your actual house, um, which are short term ways to save. So let's go over some tips on energy savings. And I'd be willing to bet you might already do some of these things and some of these things might be new to you. So everyone will learn something today, I think. So use your thermostat. This image has the thermostat set at 78. That seems a little high for me. Ours is at like 75 right now. And again, new house, so we're learning the heating and cooling system and, and what works really well for our house. But using your thermostat, your, you know, your programmable thermostat to turn your heat up a few degrees in the, or turn your air up a few degrees in the summer so that it's not quite cooling so much or turning your heat down in the winter so it's not heating quite so much is a good way to save money. Um, you might also consider getting a smart thermostat. Um, Amarin for sure has rebates on such things. And if you go to their website, AmarinIllinoisSavings.com, I believe. Um, you can find really good deals on those Nest thermostats and those Ecobee thermostats, um, which help learn your habits and um, adjust the temperature accordingly. So use your thermostat. Number two, adapt to the temperature. So instead of cranking up the heat or cranking down the air, uh, when it's hot or when it's cold, adjust your body to the temperature. I know this seems like common sense. I know when I was growing up, my parents would say, put on a sweater or, you know, why are you wearing long sleeves in the middle of the summer? Dress to the temperature. Um, when we are not heating and cooling our homes to our personal comfort and instead just dealing with our personal comfort with ourselves, um, that can help us save money on our energy bills and reduce our footprint. So adapt yourself to the temperature. Close unused air vents. So if you're fortunate enough to have rooms that you don't spend a ton of time in or rooms that you know are not really great, um, not insulated very well, you might wanna close those air vents so you're not paying to heat or cool those rooms that you're not in very often. Use the right light bulb. So this is a photo of an LED light bulb as well as a CFL light bulb. Um, those light bulbs take a fraction of the energy to produce you know, better lighting, truly, than the incandescent bulbs. But sometimes it takes a little while to figure out the correct wattage, the correct color spectrum that you like. Um, so use the right light bulb. LEDs and CFLs are the way to go. They take way less energy and create you know, just as good lighting. So if you've not started switching over to LEDs, you can do that now. Um, you can usually get them with pretty good rebates. Um, you'll see rebates at, you know, your typical hardware stores and your big box um, home improvement stores. But you can also find them at the Amarin.com or AmarinIllinoisSavings.com uh, portal where they have like a store where you can order things. And then they come right to your house and you don't have to even leave your house to get them, which is pretty great. So if you have electronics like computers, which you're likely on now, uh, or your tablets or your cell phones, check to see if there's a sleep or a hibernation mode, or it might even be called like an eco mode. Those can help to use less of the phantom energy. So when it's plugged in and not being used, it's not drawing as much power. Because if it's plugged in, it is using power. Even though it's maybe a little fraction, it's still using power. So the only way really to save, you know, 100% of the energy is to unplug things. But setting your computers to these eco modes helps with that phantom energy. Unplugging your electronics and your chargers, or in my house, we are locked in an eternal battle over unplugging the toaster that's sitting on the counter and is used for all of 30 seconds a day. Um, unplug it when you're not using it. Now, that also begs the question though, um, there are some electronics in my house that I would literally have to climb over furniture to get to those plugs. 
and I'm not going to do that every day. So you might want to research what's called a smart power strip. Again, also available at these online stores that Ameren has. You might even find them at the big box uh, stores. But a, uh, a smart power strip is one of those things that will help reduce that phantom energy while still keeping things accessible so that you, can, you don't have to climb over things to unplug them. So um, smart power strips are the way to go too. Washing your clothes in cold water seems like an easy enough thing. If you are not having to pay to heat the water, um, that's a huge reduction in, uh, in your energy bills. Um, so washing clothes in cold water is a great way to save energy. It gets your clothes just as clean and it's saving energy. And you might also look on your washing machine to see what kinds of eco modes it might have. Some of the fancier new washers have um, fancy settings. Now, we talked about hot water uh, and water, um, water heaters. That's going to be one of the greatest draws on your usage at your house, um, is keeping your water hot. Um, you've got this big old tank of water that's continuously being heated, right? And so that's gonna use a lot of energy. So if you reduce the temperature on your hot water tank from 140 down to 120, you're still gonna hit that, you know, that temperature where it'll still clean what it needs to clean or sanitize what it needs to sanitize, but it's not a scalding risk, which in my house, you know, the first thing I did when I moved into the house was check my water heater temp so my kids didn't burn their hands when they were washing their hands because we're washing our hands a lot these days. So check that water heater temp uh, and reduce it if you can to, um, you know, again, use less energy there. So along the same lines with our water heater temperature is if you're going somewhere, which, yeah, I know we're not really <laughs> going many places these days, but if you're going somewhere for more than a few days, uh, say two or three nights, you might have a setting on your water heater that's like vacation mode or away mode. You can turn that water heater off um, while you're away. So it's not continuously heating that water while you're gone. Um, most hot water tanks will heat up within an hour or so of you returning. So unless you were going directly into the shower or going to directly uh, wash something as soon as you get home from vacation, um, it probably, you probably won't even notice that um, your hot water tank was turned off. So consider doing that because again, why heat all that water and pay for that electricity if you're not even using it when you're not at home. Ceiling fans. Ceiling fans are great. Ceiling fans cool people. They don't cool the actual air. That is a distinction I've had to teach my children because they like to leave these fans on all day long. They think that it keeps their room cool. It doesn't, it just cools your, your person. But a ceiling fan is a great benefit. So instead of turning that air on or, or what have you, uh, and a ceiling fan can help keep your body cooler. Don't forget that there's a little button um, so in the summertime, I think they're supposed to go counterclockwise and in the wintertime, you, you click the little button and then it spins the other way. So you're either keeping the hot air up or pushing the warmer air down um, to keep uh, a space cool for your cool or warm, uh, depending on the season. So use those ceiling fans appropriately um, if you have them. So our friends at Citizens Utility Board, which is a, a watchdog group um, that helps uh, make sure that we're not getting scammed by utilities and making sure that um, we're getting the best deal, has a really great guide. This will be, I think you just dropped a link in the chat and this will go in the bounce back email that you'll get, uh, just a guide to home energy savings. So, and it'll be reiterating a lot of the things we just talked about here. So check that out. So hi Paige, um, that's you and me back a few years ago when we were uh, looking, <laughs> looking for smart meters uh, in the wild. That's a smart meter and that's part of the, uh, what we call the smart grid um, update that's happened across the state. So if you're a ComEd or an Ameren customer, you have a smart meter. It has digital readout rather than those spinny wheels that someone used to come around and read every month. So this is an upgrade to our system that will provide us with a couple new programs that didn't exist before because the new smart meters 
help to read our electricity more frequently. So we're getting an exact reading of our usage rather than either a guesstimate on our bill of what we think our bill might be or um, a month to month just reading of the, um, of the meter. Now your um, usage is being constantly monitored and sent to a computer that uh, downloads all that information. And so you can see almost in real time how you're using energy, when you're using energy. So this can help us make really, you know, much more informed decisions about how we use energy. So let's watch a quick little video that tells us a little bit more about what, what the smart grid is all about. Seems today that everything is getting smarter. Smartphones, smart TVs, even vacuum cleaners. But the grid that powers all those devices, not so smart. It's a one-way system where electric bills are often based on estimates, not actual readings, leaving you with surprise charges. Holy coyote. And the electric company doesn't know there's an outage until customers call in. That's why Illinois is investing in a new smart grid, where information flows in multiple directions between you and your energy provider giving you an accurate bill every month and letting you monitor your energy usage. You can even sign up for programs giving you lower rates and rebates in exchange for using energy during off-peak hours. Your smart meter can help you hunt down vampire devices that drain electricity when they're not being used. And when a storm strikes, the smart grid can better prevent outages from spreading. These and other smart grid features are powering up and headed your way. So you can not only be smart, you can save smart. Learn more at Smart Power Illinois and share this video with your neighbors. All right, so I hope that gave you a little bit of background about what we mean when we are talking about the smart grid. And should you have any more questions about that, I can answer, whoa answer those for you. Sorry. Okay. So with, did I skip a slide? No, I didn't. Okay. So with the smart grid, this gives you access as a consumer to a couple of different programs and they're called different things based on who your provider is. So if ComEd is your utility, your, um, you can have a program called hourly pricing. If you're an Ameren customer, they call it power smart pricing. And we're gonna talk about exactly what that means in just a second. And if you are a Comet or an Ameren customer, there's also a program called Peak Time Rewards. Comet calls it Peak Time Savings. And we're gonna talk about what those are and how you can save money through those programs. Let's talk first about what's called Power Smart Pricing. This is a video I'm going to show you from Ameren. If you're a ComEd customer, the program is exactly the same. Uh, this just explains uh, what it is. They just call it something different. It would be a different website to access it, but it's the same general program, okay? So let's learn a little bit about Power Smart or, uh, yeah, Power Smart Pricing or hourly pricing. And if you could turn oh. up the volume, that would be helpful. Right. I will turn up the volume. Did you know that Ameren Illinois offers customers a choice of rate options? You can pay a flat rate, or you can select hourly pricing with the PowerSmart pricing program. If you can make a few simple adjustments to how and when you use electricity, PowerSmart pricing could be a good rate option for you. On the flat rate, electricity costs the same no matter what time of day you use it. Whether it's 5 o'clock at night or 5 o'clock in the morning, you pay the same price. With PowerSmart pricing, the price you pay varies from hour to hour and day to day based on day ahead market prices. Prices are often low for most hours of the day in the fall, winter, and spring. During the summer, prices are typically cheaper during the early morning, night, and weekend hours. You can see higher prices when there's an increase in demand for electricity. This typically occurs during hot summer afternoons. You can save money with this rate by shifting your heavier electricity usage to lower priced hours of the day. For example, 
do your laundry and run the dishwasher when prices are cheaper. And if you own an electric vehicle, charge your vehicle at night. The PowerSmart pricing program also has knowledgeable specialists that can help answer questions and connect you with program tools and tips. By learning to shift your electricity use as a PowerSmart pricing participant, you'll not only have the opportunity to reduce your electricity costs, but you could also help the environment and your community. If you're interested in learning more about how to shift and save with PowerSmart pricing, go to powersmartpricing.org or call 877-655-6028. All right, so reviewing. Um, Power Smart Pricing with Amarin, uh, that's what they call it. If you're with ComEd, they call it hourly pricing. It's for residential customers of Amarin or ComEd who have smart meters. That should be pretty much everybody unless you're on a municipal utility or a co-op. The price you pay varies from hour to hour instead of being that flat rate you get notifications which you get to set if it approaches a certain price that you deem as high they will notify you which means you can figure out ways in your house to decrease your usage so you're not spending so much money on electricity that means offloading your um, high energy use things like washing dishes washing clothing to earlier in the day or later in the evening, which is when uh, energy is costs less money. So think about in the summer, during the middle of the day when it's hot, everybody's got their air conditioners on. It's a bigger draw on the grid if we have to you know, use our electricity and our washers and our things like that during the middle of the day. So this is just a way for us to save a little bit of money on our bills. Um, it costs a small amount of money. It's maybe like two bucks um, a month to participate in this program. You have to opt in. So you would have to contact your utility and sign up for this program. Now let's say that you're already a fairly energy efficient person. You already do some of these things. You already do some of the tips that we gave you. You already pay attention to when you're running your dishwasher or clothes washer. Most folks who are already maybe aware of you know, the strains on the grid and such can save probably a hundred bucks a month or so. Um, and there are folks who don't do anything to change their habits, change their energy usage times, and they still save money because they're not getting that flat rate. They're getting the market price. This is an so this is a great saving money program, but I'm going to also bring it back to the way that it is a justice related program. Peak plants that have to fire up on these really hot summer days where everybody wants to be running their air conditioning to cool off. Those peak plants are, you know, inefficient, they're old, and they have to get fired up so that we can deal with the extra strain on the grid. Those are hurting our brothers and sisters of color uh, and our low income communities the most. And so when we can be mindful of when we use our electricity, when we can be mindful of how we can reduce our impact, we're saving some money, but we're also helping keep the air clean for our brothers and sisters. So that is power smart pricing or hourly pricing. The other program that both ComEd and Ameren have is called peak time rewards, or it might be called peak time rebates, peak time savings, something like that. Um, this is again for residential customers with smart meters. That should be everybody. It's an opt-in program, so you have to opt in. You have to you know, go to their website and get signed up. And they will pay you to use less electricity during a high demand time. So what that looks like is you get signed up for this program, which if you sign up, it costs you nothing and there's no penalty if you don't do anything. But you just have opportunities to save. So the utility will declare a peak day, probably a super hot afternoon in the summer, and they will text you or call you or email you. You get to decide how to be notified. They will notify you, uh, I believe it's 24 hours prior of a peak day coming. And you know they determine that with a number of factors. But if they expect a high demand on the grid, they might call a peak event. So they'll notify you that a peak event is coming and it'll be like, um, they'll say between 2 and 5 p.m. Or, or something like that. 
we're calling a peak event, reduce your usage during that time. And because you have a smart meter that's consistently reading your usage at your house, for every little bit that you decrease your usage during this peak event, you will get a credit on your bill. It's usually a few bucks, um, unless you make it a contest to see how much you can actually unplug during that time. Uh, there was one peak event that my family experienced last summer uh, at our old house where I literally told my kids, unplug everything you can reach. Let's see how much money we can save. And it was a few dollars and it showed up on our bill. So um, you could make it a little game or, or not. Maybe, maybe that's not interesting to you, but um, it's all, all benefit here. Uh, you're not penalized if you don't participate. And so again, because we know when we have to fire up these peak plants, it hurts our brothers and sisters of color um, because they have to breathe dirty air because we're overtaxing our system. This is another kind of justice related program, another way that we can love our neighbors uh, by reducing our usage and save a couple bucks. So uh, let's launch another poll so you learned about a peak time program and about an hourly pricing program. Would you consider signing up for one of these demand response programs? So your options are yes, no, or maybe you might need a little bit more information, which you'll get in your follow-up email tomorrow with links to how you can get signed up for this. Let's give it another five seconds or so. All right, I'll end the poll and I'll share, oops, hold on. I'll share these results so you can see them. So most of you said, yeah, you would totally consider signing up for a demand response program and I encourage you to do your research. Uh, and if you need more information, that'll be coming your way tomorrow. So very good, that's encouraging. All right, let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna transition now to solar talking about solar. So there's a few ways that we can access solar um, in Illinois right now. I'm gonna move this over. So Community Solar is a program that was um, created by what's called the Future Energy Jobs Act that passed in 2016. And it basically said, we need to have ways for people who can't put solar on their house we need ways for them to be able to access solar energy. And so community solar is the solution to that. So an array is built somewhere within the utilities grid. Um, there's a few of them that are going up right now, a few in the Champaign-Urbana area. I think there's one in the Chicago area. Um, they're looking at building one in like the Southern Illinois area right now. So, so these are going up around the state and they're usually through the utility. Um, people can subscribe to a portion of that array depending on how much power your house utilizes. So you may have been getting information in the mail about this recently. There are a couple companies that are helping to promote these community solar arrays. And there's a lot of different ways that you can get connected to community solar. Um, and you're going to see about a 20% savings in your bill uh, if you subscribe to community solar. But the first thing you'll need to do if you decide to subscribe to Community Solar is to give them a copy of your utility bill because that will help the um, subscriber service decide how much solar you need to subscribe to. Um, so there's a couple of steps that you'd have to, to do to get hooked up with that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So you, the subscriber, will end up paying two bills. You'll pay one bill to the utility and then you'll pay another bill to the actual community solar array. But again, you will see about a 20% savings in your bill, even with paying two separate bills. So how that works is the solar array reports what they've generated to the utility and then the utility credits to your bill what they've generated. It's a little bit convoluted, but uh, it makes sense in the end. So how can you find a provider that's right for you? Our, our friends at Citizens Utility Board have a really great resource that breaks down, I think, three of the, um, the bigger subscriber services. Um, and it tells you how much you can save with them, if there's any penalties for, you know, if you terminate your contract before um, 
before the term is up. It kind of gives you all of the details so that you as a consumer can make a really smart decision about community solar. So the Citizens Utility Board has done the work for you. Again, I, I've recently moved. We want to get involved in community solar. It was the first place I went to see if I can get enrolled. I can't until I get my first utility bill. So we're waiting for, <laughs> for that bill to come so that we can see if, if we're a good fit for community solar. So I encourage you to check out that resource. Second way that we can get involved with solar as consumers here is called the Solar for All program. Again, a program created by the Future Energy Jobs Act passed in 2016. And the idea here was to make solar accessible to as many people as possible who maybe are traditionally left out of these kinds of programs. Also, people who are living in environmental justice communities that have been harmed by the extraction and the production of, uh, of our, electric, uh, our electricity. So this is available for residential customers and also nonprofits and public facilities. Um, and if you have a house of worship or um, something like that interested in this, um, we, can, we can talk later to figure out if you're a good candidate for this program. But to participate as an individual, you would have to qualify at 80% or below of the area median income there are some graphs on their website that you can find uh, that would tell you like what that actual number is, what you have to earn, uh, be below that number um, to be able to qualify for this system. So if you do qualify for Solar for All, it is a solar program that has no upfront cost to you at all, and that um, they would put, be putting solar directly on your house, and then you would basically be paying it off in installments that would still reduce your bill. Um, you, they have to be able to show a reduction in your bill. They do not enroll you in this program if uh, it's going to make your energy bills go up because that is not just, that is not equitable. Um, that's not the way that we want this to work. So they have to be able to show that you would have a savings in your energy bill by doing this program. Um, so to get more information on Solar for All, that website is IllinoisSFA.com. Again, this will go in the bounce back email. Uh, there's a tool there to you can find if you live within an environmental justice community, or you can figure out what the income requirements are. So all of that information is at IllinoisSolarForAll.com. And Citizens Utility Board, again, has that solar in the community resource that can help you sort out some of these details so that you can do further, further research on your own um, as well. The first of the residential um, installations have been happening recently. Um, so you might see um, news articles and things like that uh, in the news recently to see, you know, the, these installations are happening and these families are connecting these um, these solar arrays on their house. The other part of Solar for All that is an, a justice um, issue for us people of faith is that the Solar for All program helps to employ folks from the solar training programs um, that are happening around the state. So we are providing, you know, these, these installations are helping provide quality jobs in this growing field of renewable energy. Um, and there's also some earmarks here where returning citizens or persons who are transitioning from uh, being incarcerated can get this training so that they can get on a path to, you know, having really great jobs and, you know, the ability to provide for themselves um, in, in this new and exciting and expanding industry. And so that uh, you can feel good as a person of faith that this program is helping our brothers and sisters who are having a, a, a tough time. Okay, so we talked about the short term things that we can do to save money on energy. We're going to talk about some advocacy now, which is kind of more of the long game, right? So we can protect our electric bills, we can promote equity and justice and a just transition in the state of Illinois by supporting what's called the Clean Energy Jobs Act. Um, and if you're connected to Faith in Place in any way, you've probably heard us talk about this for a little while now. Um, and maybe you've even joined us at an advocacy day at the state capitol. We went last March before the world changed, uh, literally like the week before <laughs> the world changed. We went last October uh, and we're still keeping up our advocacy to say in Illinois, we need a just transition 
And now with COVID happening and so many people being out of work, a clean energy economy and investing in that could provide jobs for a lot of people who are really needing them right now and some retraining so that they can get into those jobs. So we feel like this kind of transition and this kind of bill is really a path forward, not just for you know the folks that are traditionally not left behind, but for everybody in the state of Illinois, from Chicago on down to Harrisburg. Okay. So the Clean Energy Jobs Act, just as a really quick overview, um, has a number of different things that it's attempting to do. Equitable workforce, uh, energy access and solar for all, which we just talked about, that program that happened with the future Energy Jobs Act, we're hoping to expand on that with the Clean Energy Jobs Act. Renewable energy, we're trying to get our state towards a 100% renewable portfolio and we've got a, uh, some standards there of how we're gonna get there. Energy efficiency is part of that, and we've talked about that today. Capacity market reform, how our utilities buy the energy. Uh, Ameren doesn't generate electricity, they buy it off the market. Um, and as you might imagine, it's a really crazy system. And so doing some reform in how that happens um, could be a really good thing for our state. We're looking for carbon-free power, again, getting us toward that renewable energy goal. Increasing electric transportation, that might be like electrified school buses for school systems, or increasing the amount of charging stations that you can find so that people who have electric vehicles can actually get places uh, and get and be able to plug in wherever it is that they are. We want to support fossil fuel workers and communities. So I just moved from Harrisburg, which is a coal mining uh, town, and they're hurting. They're hurting a lot because the, the jobs that many people used to you know, support their families on just aren't there anymore. And so there needs to be some kind of support for those, or those communities to be able to move forward into other industries, perhaps even in the renewable energy industry, um, so that those, those communities are not left behind by this transition. And utility accountability. Uh, I don't know if you've been reading the news lately, but we've had some drama with some of our utilities and uh, we need to keep the utilities accountable. We need to be putting people over profit uh, that is across the board. And this, this bill will help to keep the utilities accountable because this bill was, has been written by mostly grassroots organizations and environmental organizations. Um, we're trying to keep the utility out of this um, because of course they're only going to advocate for their own interests. So that is the Clean Energy Jobs Act. So that was a lot of information. We talked about some short-term things we can do, some long-term things that we can do. We're going to launch a poll to ask, did you learn at least one way that you can save on energy in your home today? Let's see, there it goes. Yes or no, did I do my job? Oh, I'm so excited. I hope you found this beneficial. We'll give it a couple more seconds to see if anybody else wants to get in there. All right, here, let's share. So 100% of you said you learned something today. Uh, I'm a former school teacher. That makes my former school teacher heart feel happy. So thank you. I'm glad you learned something today. Okay, so we have a couple more pieces here. Now would be a great time where if you have a specific question about something that I, whoops, hold on, something that I presented on, um, happy to answer that. We, if it's something that's a little bit more involved, I'm happy to try to chat with you offline. Um, but if it's something that you think I can answer, maybe, darn it all. If you think it's something I can answer quickly, type it in the chat uh, and we'll, oopsie, we'll see if you have any questions. So I'll give you a minute to think, give you a minute to type. I can also unmute you if you want to raise your hand using the raise hand function. You can go. find that in participants. All right, I'll give you a couple seconds. We're doing pretty good on time, so we'll get you out of here early.
Okay, I see the question. If you're on a co-op, would you be able to save on energy and power bills? So currently, if you're on a co-op, the best thing for you to do would be to look at your co-op's website or to call your co-op and ask, do you have any demand response programs um, available? They might not. Um, so that's a question you have to ask your co-op. But more than likely, they have some programs related to energy efficiency that you can be taking advantage of. Um, most of them will either come out and do an energy audit at your house, and they may not be coming out right now, um, you know, just as a safety measure, but they can maybe walk you through um, an energy audit at your house to see, you know, where are the places that you could be saving on energy, maybe lighting, maybe furnace, you know, something like that. Um, actually, Citizens Utility Board had a really great, like, do-it-yourself um, energy audit at your house. That might be a useful resource to you, too. I'll try to remember to put that in the bounce back email. So my best advice would be call your co-op, see what kinds of programs they have. They may even have like an energy efficiency or, or something like that tab on their website and access those resources that way. Um, let's see. This is being recorded and I will send the recording um, out in the follow-up email tomorrow. So you'll be able to check that out tomorrow. Um, and looking for the best company to use, Roland, that is probably a question I'm going to need to know, like where you're located and, and things like that. So we can follow up by email there and, and we can, I can help you sort that out. Um, I'm assuming you're asking about um, either community solar or maybe putting solar on your house. So let's follow up with that. My email is Christina at faithinplace.org. Thank you, Roland. Okay, that's all the questions I see right this minute. Let's give you guys another minute. Okay. So like I said, we're gonna finish up a little bit early here, but I wanted to share just a couple more resources with you before we go. So Faith in Place has done what we call a green team summit for the last several years. Typically they're in person. This year we're going virtual, which is actually kind of exciting. Uh, be, you know, Being from a, the Southern part of the state, um, most of the time I'm not able to go up to Chicago or you know, just drop everything and spend a weekend up there, um, you know, going and getting equipped with all this information. Um, so now anybody around Illinois and quite frankly across the United States or globally can participate in this Green Team Summit. It will be happening over the week of September 13th through 17th. Uh, and you can sign up for the various different pa uh, panels that we have and the various different workshops that we have. So you can participate in the ones that interest you um, from the comfort of your own home. Uh, you'll see all kinds of different Faith in Place staff participating. Because it's virtual, we're able to get some speakers that maybe wouldn't ordinarily come in person for the Green Team Summit. So we've got some cool stuff lined up for you. So again, September 13th through 17th, you can register for free. Everything is free uh, at greenteamsummit.org. You can find that at our website and then that, that website as well and get registered for that. Um, and they'll send you more information about how to do that. So if you have a green team at your house of worship, invite some folks over to participate in these different uh, workshops and panels and things like that. Um, see, you know, or coordinate like, well, I can make this one, but I can't make this one and, and see if you can work it out so that you can participate as fully as you can in, uh, in this information. There's also going to be a part of our summit where we give awards regionally to the different green teams that are doing just outstanding work. Um, so if you know of a house of worship that's just really go doing amazing work uh, on behalf of the, our environment, um, there is a place at the greenteamsummit.org website where you can nominate a house of worship for an award. Uh, and I believe Katie is putting that in the chat right now. So we would love for you to participate with us. We would love for you to nominate a house of worship. Um, very exciting. We gave out our very first Southern Illinois award uh, last year and that made me very happy. So Faith in Place educates, we connect and we advocate. Um, and in this time of COVID where we're not physically together, um, it's more important than ever to be able to connect. 
And so we would like to know more about you and the different programs that interest you the most. So we would love it if you would fill out this, um, this bit.ly uh, link here, which would tell us more about you and the things you're interested in. Faith in Place has several programming areas, energy being one, that's, that's a, the program you participated in today. But we do have programs around sustainable food and land use. That might be like community gardens and um, pollinator work that you do at your house of worship. We have uh, water preservation work we do and then more advocacy work. Uh, first and foremost coming up is some work around the coal ash uh, bill that was passed last year and is in rulemaking right now. We wanna make sure that those standards are high and that the most, po most people can be protected uh, from coal ash in our water. So advocacy um, is one of the things we do um, every day. So if those things are interesting to you, we'd love to hear about what kinds of pro programs we can help plug you into. So please fill that out if you can. Um, and to stay connected to us, we're on social media, uh, at Faith in Place on all of the major platforms, or as always, visit faithinplace.org for all of your Faith in Place needs. And I think that's everything. And I got you out of here early. So if you have any questions, I'll hang around until, uh, until one. Thank you for sharing your lunch hour with me. Uh, appreciate your uh, using your time to, to learn a little bit of something about faith in place and about energy savings and energy efficiency.